as it will go. Can you guys hear me all right? Yeah. Cool. Anyway, my name is Jordan Rudis. I was thinking about what I wanted to play, because last time I did one of these for the guys, I think I played the Star Spangled Banner. So as I was sitting watching, everybody else was thinking, oh, I'll play a little Beethoven. And hopefully it was somewhat recognizable. So uh, that was kind of a, an idea, a designed idea while I was watching everybody else. So my name is Jordan Rudis, as you heard. I'm very pleased to be here. Um, I'm a musician. Uh, my job with Roly is to kind of supervise the music experience. Um, and I really enjoy that job. It's wonderful. I work with some great people, including some great design people. Um, you know, I come at this from uh, a keyboard player background. Um, I play in a group called Dream Theater. And I play, in Dream Theater, I play on standard uh, keyboard, standard musical equipment. Um, the seaboard, of course, is very different. Uh, it opens up a whole other channel of musical thinking. Um, so I got into it because I always imagined the next level of musical expression. Um, I studied classical piano at Juilliard. I spent a lot of time just pressing the black and white keys. But I always thought, uh, especially when I got to be a teenager, that there would be a lot more to it, that I could kind of like get into technology and do cool things. Actually, it happened about the time when a friend of mine brought over uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, the Tarkas album. I don't know if any of you in the room have ever heard that. Raise your hand if you have. I'm just curious. A few of you, yeah. But Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, the Genesis, King Crimson, all these kind of groups slightly blew my mind and uh, allowed me to become aware of things outside of Juilliard. And uh, so I started to think about synthesizers. I started to think about different ways to express music. And I can remember the time when somebody brought over a, uh, a Moog synthesizer. And it, you know, the Moog synthesizer has a lot of different knobs on it and different controls and has a way to change the pitch. And it was completely like a, you know, a mind expander at that time. Um, so I was dreaming about a way to play on keys, like definite notes, kind of like, uh, let's see, like this kind of thing. Kind of keyboard. But also to be able to, to bend the pitch. And to a certain point, the Moog synthesizer got me there, but I wanted something a little bit more. Um, so, uh, just moving forward, the, uh, the CEO of, uh, of Roly is a guy named Roland Lamb, a very inspirational, really cool guy. Uh, he's been playing music since he was a kid, uh, but he also studied a lot of other things. But he was, during his studies, he, he was very passionate about music. And uh, after going to Harvard, he, um, when he left Harvard, I think that's the way the story goes, the school told him that they would basically cover any Educate, further education that he wanted. So he decided to go to the Royal School of Design in the UK. And um, when he was there, 
he actually did the first pouring of this seaboard as we know it. And the, and the seaboard, the surface of it, is a kind of silicone. And Roland was showing me pictures of him actually designing the very first uh, instruments all by himself without anybody else there. And it's really interesting to see that because he really had this vision. So well, what's interesting to understand about this vision and the design is that this is a new kind of musical instrument. But what's especially appealing to me is, first of all, I'm a keyboardist. And the seaboard is based on a keyboard form factor. So the fact that this is based on a design that we've all known for so many years, that kind of brings it into a place where it's very, like, in my, from my point of view, very important. It's not a new design that's so like left field that it's like, what the hell is that? Like I'll see instruments you know, that are really, really unusual and maybe really cool, but the Rolly Seaboard starts with this form factor of an actual keyboard. So it's ha it has like, you know, the chromatic scale and has the equivalent of black and white keys. So as a keyboardist, I can walk right up to it and I can just, you know, basically play. Um, that's not to say there's not a little bit of time needed to actually kind of immerse yourself and get into the idea of all the you know, sliding and expression that you could do. But of course, that's the beauty of it. Um, so we took the, the idea of keys, like on a piano keyboard. And you know, when you think about the piano keyboard, the piano keyboard is made up of basically white and black keys that go up and down. It's like switches. And the seaboard, although it has this black and white idea, it's not switches at all. It's what we call key waves. That's a big part of the design idea here, is that everything is flexible. You know, like on a piano keyboard, you see pianists, you know, you'll watch them, you know, in concert or on TV or whatever, and they'll, they'll press the key and then they'll start to move their finger around on the key like, and it's doing absolutely nothing. It's a great visual. You love to see that. I mean, it's nice when they do that and they make the faces. It's really, you know, I, I think I did that too because I was dreaming about some kind of vibrato. But of course, you know, the seaboard is, is an evolution of the keyboard. It's not um, a replacement of the piano keyboard, but it's an evolution of that concept with the key waves. Because on the seaboard, everything that you do uh, with your finger on the keys at every moment is going to affect the sound. So if I do play a key like this key, and I wiggle my finger, it actually does something. If I press into the key, it does something as well. So we like to think of that as like a continuous motion idea, very much like um, a violin or something like that. Let me call up another sound, and you can kind of see what, I, what this means. Here, here's a... Um, like a sax sound. So I'm going to use the key waves, and first I'll show you the, the vibrato. And of course it responds to the velocity of touch as well, so I can get all this expression just out of hitting the seaboard you know, harder or softer. But the really cool thing is that once my finger is down on this key, that remember it starts with the piano kind of idea, but goes much further in its design. So I play the note, and then as I hold the note, I can then push into the keyboard, and there's this really kind of cool physical tactile feel that allows me to express the sound even more. So here we go. Now I'll press into it. I'll dig in. Now I'll let go a little. So you get all that expression out of a note, which is very much like a wind instrument or a bowed instrument. If you think about a violinist, you know, taking their bow and putting it on the string, and then every moment they're connecting with that sound, so they're really expressing themselves. <laughs> And then on the seaboard, we've introduced the idea of gestures as well. So um, if I want to play, let's say, these three notes, G, G sharp, and A, I can play them like I would on a standard keyboard. But if I then want to kind of uh, push into the keys and play them even more than like a legato connected, I would go like... So by introducing this new kind of gesture, I'm actually bending the pitch, which uh, in, like, 
you know, standard kind of synthesizers would be done on a pitch wheel or a slider. And you'll notice that part of the seaboard design it doesn't have any sliders on it. It doesn't have any like real knobs. It has one dial in the middle which can be used for different things. But it's completely this very slim, matter of fact it might even be hard to see from the back like what, you know, what is going on. But it's a very, very slim design. It's thinner than any keyboard that I own that I can think of except for one actually. It's a, it's a very tiny little keyboard. But it's really, really thin. Um, it has no additional knobs or sliders. So what that means is that everything is done from the touch of the instrument. So that's where this kind of opens up new ground. The ability to like play, you know, a musical line. Things I would usually do with a knob or a slider. So getting back to the vision of this thing, so that you have the piano keyboard, the equivalent of that, in these key waves, but then on top of the key waves you have a ribbon, right? And on the bottom of the key waves you have another ribbon. So it's really, really cool. So no matter where you are on the playing surface, you can be sliding around. You can hit a couple keys, switch to the ribbon, and slide. It's really, really, it's, you know, it's, besides being super fun, it's a super effective way of kind of expressing an acoustic instrument in this case, because you wouldn't be able to do that really any other way. So if I kind of slap the seaboard, I can get that kind of hit sound, so. So we see the seaboard design really moving towards people like composers and arrangers, not, not only uh, keyboardists, although of course it's a natural idea for a keyboardist to you know, sit at this and say, oh, it's like a keyboard and play. But you know, nowadays, um, if you walk into a composer's house, an arranger's house, you'll always see a little keyboard. You'll always see something that they're inputting the information into the computer to do their work. And we have a real vision of the seaboard being an instrument that will be in each one of those homes. So I want to show you just an example of uh, what maybe a composer might do with this, a classical composer. Because um, they need an effective way to input notes and there's no better way to do it than with something like a seaboard. If they're inputting a violin part, if they're inputting a trumpet part or an acoustic bass part, they need a way to effectively do the kind of expression that those instruments will do. So. Um, Here's an example. This is a string sound. And remember, all the different um, expression, there's no, there's no like volume pedal, there's no knobs. And to do what I'm about to do um, with a standard kind of synthesizer, you would need volume pedals or sliders or something. So um, here's uh, uh, the idea. So.
see. The other, the other thing that's really important to point out is that on the seaboard, we're kind of like pushing a lot of uh, boundaries with musical instruments. Part of the design is to, you know, take the idea that's been around for a long time with synthesizers of bending pitch, maybe changing volume. But the thing that has not been around, that's a big part of this whole concept, is having independent control of every note that you play. And what that basically means is that, let's say I have something like this nice drone going on, right? I can hold it, I can press into it, I can make it express, we can all meditate if we like, whatever we want to do, it's up to you. But while this is holding, I can play in the right hand, I'm going to let go for one second, but in the right hand I can express um, different kind of bending, like kind of, you know, more of an Indian or ethnic type of a flavor. <laughs> So this would take three hands to do on a, on a synthesizer that you'd find in like the guitar center, but I can do this here, check it out. So you can kind of see the, uh, the expressive capabilities. So that whole idea of having that kind of control where you're bending some notes and not others and pushing into some notes and not others really is, you know, a big part of this concept. And the whole feeling of bending and sliding and doing all that kind of stuff big design consideration. I can remember a lot of really cool kind of uh, get-togethers, if you will, at Rolly. Um, and we would just, you know, the, the musicians would kind of gather, the, the engineers would be all around, and we'd be like, you know, checking out the, uh, the, the sliding of the instrument. We'd be literally just going over to it and going, <laughs> trying the ribbon, see how fast we could play. So there's all kinds of feedback because, you know, things don't happen perfectly the first time. Like maybe the first time I went to go, there might have been some drop notes and I would say, guys, you know, let's really think about the way that this is designed for the musician because a musician expects a certain kind of feedback. And one of the great things that I've been able to do um, with this company is that they really they really are very responsive and they listen to me as far as like what kind of musicians to bring in to work with and I brought in some really really great um, players who are also very technical so it's been a lot of fun getting this thing to really really come alive the things that we think about in terms of the, the, the design of this are what does this feel what does this surface feel like you know when I go to slide on the ribbon. What is that experience like? What is the tactile experience? When you press into it, what's the feeling there? Because on a standard synthesizer, the kind you might see at a guitar center, it might have aftertouch. When you press the aftertouch, chances are one note will affect all the notes. So this is very different, the fact that, you know, everything is separate. Um, but that feeling you get is totally like this organic kind of sensation that, that really, really matters. And also, you know, one of the things that we think about is the fact that, you know, a piano keyboard, I could be looking at you and I could be playing and not looking at the keyboard. So there has to be some kind of like feeling underneath your fingers. It's not that it's just a flat board. We're not designing just, you know, like a single ribbon kind of thing. There has to be something that tells the, you know, the, the body and the mind where you're at with the instrument. So that's, so that's a, a big part of, of uh, what this is all about as well. So um, I also want to say that, that uh, Roly as a company is very interested to give this instrument its own voice. And basically what that means is that we have to decide on what sound the Seaboard makes. Because this, this can play any sound through the magic of MIDI. But um, 
but it's really important to us to develop some kind of an identity. So we're designing our own synthesizer, which I'm going to call up just for a moment to show you. Uh, it's called Equator. And what's really cool about Equator is that Equator is designed specifically to respond to all the different kinds of touch that are available on the seaboard. The pressure, the strike, the bending. Um, I'll just play a sound that I made, which is, I think, really pretty nice. Uh, here we go. So it uses kind of a nylon guitar and some waveforms that are in the background. And as I press into the seaboard, it kind of increases the sound of the waveform. But as I hit a key, I'll get that kind of guitar attack. So I can be like. So one of the first challenges we had when we first put up the seaboard is that the world is really not so much positioned for something that sends all these independent messages. We've had to build relationships and a lot of what the work that has been done is like having meetings at the company and going out and talking to people. And at this point, Roly has made a big splash in the music world to kind of bring a lot of the big players around. We've told them, you know, our instrument, you're able to play two notes and bend like in different directions or play some, press this way, press that way. And everybody's, you know, they're really interested and they're having trouble ignoring what we're doing because, you know, it's really very powerful and it's done very well. So we're establishing this whole community, we're building our own synthesizer that really makes it very easy to just kind of plug and play. And I want to say something before we open it up for questions, which is that you'll all notice that this design, um, it's an all black keyboard. And I feel like this keyboard was really made for me because, you know, I'm in a prog metal band. You know, I wear black. The keyboard is black. It's thin. It fits right into my groove. So, uh, and that's why I'm here. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll open it up for everybody. Thank you so much for, for listening and checking out the keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. So let's do one or two, and then. Uh, okay. And then, oh yeah, here we go. Here we go. Let's get it rolling. Hi. Um, you spoke a little bit about bringing in how you recruited keyboards you know yes. to help with the design process. <coughs> right. Did you bring in? Um, did you do more traditional user testing where you brought in somebody who's a keyboardist who's wasn't really in like designing and said, hey. Thing, yeah, yeah totally. Play, play yeah, what we did is um, we've done a lot of that kind of thing. Um, actually, what I meant is that I brought people to work for the company to uh, you know just be product demonstrators and to you know just be involved on that level. But what we've done and what's been really interesting is uh, and told us gave us a lot of information is we would go to studios in some of the big cities and we would invite you know, keyboard players, people who wanted to check out the instrument or have an open house. Like there's a studio uptown called Stadium Red, which is a big studio, and they have a lot of people floating, you know, through there. So we had a day, we've done that a few times, where people just come in and, you know, they check it out and they ask questions and we can turn them on to it. And it's always really, you know, it's always revealing because one of the things that we, we've worked on a lot that we noticed when we first showed the Seaboard, you know, a couple of years ago, is that people were having trouble get keyboardists were having trouble getting their fingers to produce a note. That's a big problem. So, um, you know, we worked a lot on our sensors and the action to get that right. So we, we, we see a lot, you know, we see a lot when we do that. Um, and the other thing is that's really interesting is that, you know, a keyboard, like one keyboard player can walk up to this and start to play. And another keyboard player will walk up to it and not really know quite what to do and need more instruction. Part of it, I think, is that, you know, the idea of pressing into a key or wiggling your finger is so foreign to like piano players that it's just like, what is that? So if maybe if they played a little guitar or something, the idea of bending or moving or shaking, they can get it. So we've gotten a lot of information and we can kind of like tailor our design to make sure that it's as friendly as possible. Cool. Yeah, cool. And one more. Yeah, it's getting the steps in today. Uh, my question is, is the whole step been like a fixed distance? And it's sort of the bigger question about, it seems like on this platform you could let, you could have customized a ton of different 
vectors and stuff, almost limitless. Right. Was there was there big debates about what you left off, like what you didn't don't allow the, the user to customize? Yeah. Well, as far as like bending goes, what's really cool is that you can bend pretty much any distance. Like you know, you could say I want to go from this note to that note and go right, or from here to here and go. So that part is very, very open. I mean, you know, th this instrument is very much about breaking down boundaries and trying to open them up at the same time without limitations. I mean, you're not going to have anything. So there are certain things that, you know, just are, you know, it's within a window, of course. Cool. Yeah. Uh, well, one last round of applause for Jordan. Thank you. Thank you. All right.